Do you have any reaction to the Christopher Lane case? Uh, I'm not familiar with it, actually. That was White House Deputy Press Secretary Josh Earnest yesterday punting a question regarding the brutal slaying of Christopher Lane. However, moments later, after the events surrounding the murder were described, Ernest had this to say. Well, just that this sounds like a pretty tragic uh, case, I wouldn't want to get ahead of the, of, the, of the legal process here, and it's clear that law enforcement officials are involved and are investigating. Talk about selective outrage. Because if the Obama standard for not commenting was because a legal process is ongoing, or if law enforcement officials involved or are involved, or if an investigation is taking place, then he should never have said this. But my main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. Um, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Joining me with reaction to this glaring double standard is Robert Zimmerman. His brother was, of course, acquitted in the shooting death of Trayvon Martin last month. Great to see you, Robert. Uh, what do you say to this glaring hypocrisy in the reporting? And it's not, a, it's not always a race narrative, but it's the hypocrisy that gets me here. What do you say? David, it's great to be with you. Um, I don't know where to begin on the White House. Apparently they've lost internet access uh, or there's some other explanation as to why the entire country is talking about the tragic slaying of Chris Lane. Uh, and they're unaware of it, just like Jay Carney was unaware weeks ago. Uh, of our family security situation. Um, I, I see the double standard there. Uh, if the president feels like he should make remarks, then he will. I wish that the White House chief deputy press secretary were a little bit more prepared to answer questions about um, some of the topics trending in our, in our nation. I don't think it's fair to say that he should know about everything that has any kind of racial inflection, nor in this case do I think uh, that we should point out only uh, the race of the shooter or of the alleged shooter uh, as a factor that we need to look into and to decry it as racist, but for the fact that his social media accounts seem to, by his own hand, suggest that he hates white people and he quantifies uh, 90 percent of black, uh, I'm sorry, of white people uh, being nasty. And that, that kind of, it, it's really disturbing because he also tweets two days after the Zimmerman verdict, my brother's verdict of not guilty, that he's been knocking out uh, five what he calls peckers, uh, which is a slang word, uh, a derogatory word for white people. And if you read between the lines there, that's a black young person saying that they are not happy with the verdict and that they are directing violence, uh, hostility towards people who are white, very specifically. And that's what I'm, I'm really bothered with. You know what bothers me about this is this is really about a thug lifestyle. And it's not always black on white. It's something deeper than that. We have the the references to white people knocking them out we have gang style initiation events and when you look at this for what it is the real danger is that it's hijacked for another agenda rather than dealing with the wrong, with the correct problem in your brother's case it was the false narrative that it was a race issue that was pushed that was supported by the race profiteers out there and here we have a case where as Juan Williams and Colonel Allen West both agreed earlier there are no civil rights leaders leading a charge on what's happening to our young children today and why they end up in these situations. So when it comes to this White House, one, I don't think they should weigh in on everything. But do you think the president has a responsibility to weigh in and say, we have a problem with our youth when they have this kind of moral character or lack of you know, moral I think character? Sure. I think the president, when he did take to the podium, which is what Ed Hen and Henry was referencing uh, in that uh, tape that you played, he did say that we need to do some soul searching and to do uh, some more directed efforts in terms of mentoring African-American youth. Now, that happens to be what my brother was doing, and that's what uh, your previous guests were alluding to. You have to go into the hood, which is quite literally uh, what George did, despite the funding being cut off. Children whose parents, whose father was serving a life sentence in prison, uh, were not something he was willing to dismiss and to just say, well, the funding's cut off and I'm out of here. He knows that the way to break the cycle is by directly intervening in young people's lives so that 
if he sees something, for example, on their social media where they're trying to acquire guns or have guns or they hate this group of people or that group of people, there's some kind of an adult there to talk about it. And I think we make a lot of good points about this uh, culture that seems to glorify guns, violence, uh, you know, terrible treatment of women, drugs, cash, Mis cars, whatever you want to call it. all the other things. And when we look at it for what it is, let's face it, they had a gun. It's illegal. Should not have had the gun. This is not about a legal gun owner. This is about a thug lifestyle. This is about ownership of something that is a deadly weapon and using it to kill another human being. What is... It's at its core, if I may, David, it's at its yeah. core the way I see it. It's, it's a horrible failure of parenting. I'm not sure where we divorced ourselves as a society from the notion that what young people do in our midst, in our care, those who are under 18, are our responsibility. Uh, it, their actions are our responsibility as parents. Parents are, have to be where the buck stops for the actions of children. If you're uh, 15, 16, 17 year olds have guns, are trying to secure guns, to procure guns for whatever reason, you need to know about it and you need to stop well, the it. The problem because here, you can't however, stop with Robert, music. is that these parents weren't even involved in the picture, according to the police, according to neighbors. These kids ran wild, they were raising themselves, and that is not an environment that is ever successful when it comes to children. Robert Zimmerman, uh, thank you for joining us. Coming up. Very good to see you, David. Thanks. The 